so um, I was going to start at a different spot, but I see a hummingbird that's working the salmon berries, flowers that are coming out here. I was just wondering whether we can get up to see it. Oh, that's over on the far side, but I'll probably scare it out. Let's see if we can catch up to it. Keeping its distance. Yeah. Well, anyway, welcome everybody to day four of our social distancing broadcast. We this is the uh, wild edible medicinal walk uh, edition, and we're also going to show you how to try to find natural spring water in case for some reason on top of this disaster there's an earthquake or something that knocks out your water to your house. I know, God forbid, well, the thing that reminded us is, of course, we're due in the next 100 years to the big one here on the West Coast, but also because uh, there was a 5.4 off of California, 5.2, and uh, today, this morning, and yesterday morning, I think it was in Utah, there was a 5 point something that uh, knocked out the coronavirus call center in a um, short time, though. Fortunately, those were pretty small enough to not be huge. Well, anyways, we're um, right here, and all the uh, plants are starting to come out here in western Washington, down in the lowlands. You might notice we're by water. You can hear that. Um, and that keeps the uh, temperature about constant all night, uh, so it's not too cold. And so plants uh, like salmonberry, as you can see right here, the flowers are starting to come out. And Anything that has an edible berry, like salmon berry, which is a ras nat native ra raspberry, also has edible petals. Now, you don't want to eat all of them off because they will, uh, it won't turn into a berry then. They definitely need to pollinate and attract those hummingbirds. Yeah, we were trying to track down a couple of seconds ago and see. And uh, so we'll look forward to getting the first ones of those. Uh, we'll probably be doing this still in May. And uh, next to it right here, is an elderberry and the elderberry um, leaves are this is all one leaf one compound leaf and the this is a red elderberry that grows in our area that's not really edible uh, some people use it for med some medicine but the edible berry which we'll look at again in our own yard we planted uh, black and blue elderberry which you can use more for edible purposes in our orchard Oh, you can see the flowers are even developing here. This is cool. And the elderberry flower. Yeah, that'll be very pungent. And, um, but I won't get into the medicinal uses because there's not a lot of scientific evidence. Down here, we've got a, and you probably have some growing in your yard, depending on where you live. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is the dandelion. Now, I'm not going to... You can just pick this and eat the um, petals, but I'm not going to eat this because it's right next to a very popular dog walking spot. But um, really more nutritious you can get out of is um, just cut it off about halfway down the stalk and then collect a bunch of those. Turn them upside down in a frying pan with some butter or some olive oil. And they are amazing. They have this amazing nutty taste. Just fry them for about hot for about 60 seconds in oil or butter upside down the dandelion flowers and just oh, amazing <laughs> they're so good petals? oh what what about the petals petals what about the petals remember they're not petals oh sorry they're not technically petals they're all individual flowers right oh, i'm away. sorry go ahead you better talk oh, about it okay so this is in the what family this is asteraceae so right. sunflower, sunflower family, family. Mm -hmm. so what a lot of people don't know is that every single one of these individual petal looking creatures are actually their own individual flower. So when somebody asks you how many petals does every single member of the sunflower family actually have and people are guessing 54 and 132 and on and on, you could say no, five and blow their <laughs> mind because every single one of those little critters has five fused petals and Neat. all of them are flowers. So that's sunflowers, And that's daisies. our biggest plant family yes, really around here in North region. America. Yep. Oh, sorry, northern part of North America. Further south, you go in the tropics, you get uh, more of the monocots are very hot or more abundant. Also, right next to there's so many things in the lawn that are edible. Now, it, you don't generally 
want to eat out of your lawn or gravel because, of course, who would eat their veggies out of the lawn or gravel? Well, just put some in the little areas of your garden, and then they're just delectable, just like your uh, things that you so-called are used to eating. And Oh, yeah, okay, let's go over here. We're going to go next to... Now, right here is grass. <laughs> you might be, what? I bet you half of you have eaten grass today already and didn't know it on purpose. Uh, you know, oats, wheat, um, corn, and this, and guess where sugar comes from? Well, it's just a super tall grass. And this is some new grass here. And again, as you can see, <laughs> Lily just kicked me and she just peed. Uh, so I'm not going to eat this. But if you just eat a nice, fresh piece of grass, especially the taller ones that are, wherever it's putting its energy, that's what you want to chew on. And it's full of sugar. So if you are having sugar cravings, say you run out of sugar, you're on the trail run of uh, energy, just start chewing on grass. Find the species that tastes the best. Chew it up. Swallow the juice. That's full of sugar. And spit out the, unless you need a lot of fiber, spit out the uh, remnants of the grass. As soon as it starts tasting grassy, then spit it out. Oh, there's some nice stuff right there. Too bad. It has danger of dog pee right there. Anyway, right next to it, you might notice is a nice early flowering plant. I'm gonna just pull this one out. Yeah. So this right here is a bittercress. So this is a member of the mustard family, which also contains things like broccoli and cauliflower and kohlrabi and all sorts of great things um, that you love. Um, or maybe don't, I don't know. <laughs> and um, so this plant um, has similar characteristics. You can also nibble on it as well and it won't hurt you at all. Um, do you want me to talk about how to identify it? It's yeah, small. absolutely. Just like okay. you identified the aster sunflower family, most of the aster um, family plants have some sort of edible quality, but not necessarily all of them that we know of. And this, pretty much all the mustards mm -hmm. they say mm -hmm. are... Um, we just say in this bio region. Because yeah. we know these guys are okay because we've probably tasted all of them. So the way that you can tell if you have a mustard family plant, well, there's a couple different ways. But um, if your flowers are big enough, it's really easy to tell. And if they're really tiny, you can use a hand lens to tell. But they all have four petals, four little critters called sepals. I'll have to show them on another flower or something. Yeah, it's too, too small. small. Anyway, four sepals, four petals. They have six stamens, four are really tall, two of them are really short, and they have a pistil in the middle. So all the flowers in that family have it. So if you want to take apart your kale or your broccoli or your radish uh, flowers, they're all going to look exactly the same. Plus, they all have a really interesting seed uh, pod. It's either called a silical or a silic. And so this is a silic. It is super long and skinny. It always makes me think of a sword or something. It's a leek. Um, and the silicles are usually a little bit more round. So um, it's just the type of seed that they have. And if you look up some different pictures of different ones, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Cool. Yay. I'm not going to sample any because, of course, I'm going to be try to sing in a song. Uh, and, um, dog pee. Yeah, dog pee, but also, yeah, I'm just going to drink water at the most before I sing. My oh, fourth attempt of the year. Oh, hey, Clay, Hi, Melina, Clay. Hey, Emily, and Polly. We're doing... <laughs> Oh, our fruit trees are doing great, Polly. Yeah, Thanks. They are uh, well flowered. <laughs> we'll show, we're definitely next week. We're going to do a orchard tour. The orchard looking awesome. Although we do have to weed a lot. All right. So our next stop on the plant walk. Oh, Kim's going to get it. By the way, can I borrow the uh, books? I just want to show everybody. Oh. We. I, one thing I wanted to mention was yesterday we had read somewhere somebody had said ibuprofen might not be uh, indicated for coronavirus. And now yesterday, the main expert in Europe who kind of discovered some of the coronavirus She was stuff. looking for how the viruses, the coronavirus actually attaches to yeah. the cells and how it invades it. And she said it's kind of a myth that um, ibuprofen is Chances contrary. are very, very yeah, slim. Yeah. Like, so just like everything else, all this herbal medicine, uh, in addition to the Western medicine that's trying to tackle this problem right now, there's going to be a lot of experiments, thoughts, uh, rumors that come out and you read it, and research you it, read it, research it and wait it on. a couple of days yep. <laughs> to see whether somebody else um, says, no, not so much. All right. Uh, we're going to continue up our trail and I know, uh, Clay, you're still watching. You've been here a hundred times. More than, that. <laughs> More than that. Probably a thousand. Um, and we're going to stop along the way at a few different things. Wanted to point out again today, if you can somehow get a copy in this uh, time of Botany in a Day. Boring title, but most amazing book ever. You should definitely try to. Oh, wow. Okay, well, this is 
as far as edibility goes, only those who love cucumbers would want to eat this. I can't stand cucumbers. Yeah, too strong, but, um, and obviously, but this is the first, as a naturalist in the Pacific Northwest here, we need to know this plant because this is the first one that comes, uh, leaves out, and usually around the 1st of February it's leaving out Even already. Even earlier yeah. sometimes. It's and then, the and it's understory, so it kind of gets protected from frost. And then the flowers, which are already almost done flowering, um, come out in by the end of February. And uh, the uh, fruits, by the way, Indian plum. These Indian plum, plum fruits are ripe probably or first of June. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And then the birds really hit them hard. So if you want to get them, you have to either protect them or. Get and they a don't taste fantastic. Well, and you I, want to I wait until like they're. Pur- uh oh. Yeah. Anyway, you want to wait until they're really purple. Don't try them when they're green and red and in between. No, no. Wait till they're purple. And they have a very massive pit in the middle, so you don't get a lot of yeah. fruit. Yeah. But that's yeah. okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to stop right across the street right here. <laughs> and, okay. uh, this right here is my favorite tasting uh, pine family plant. Anything in the pine family is considered edible, but there are some contraindications for if you're pregnant. Always be very careful about what you're eating if you're pregnant. But right here is a western hemlock tree, and you have to say hemlock tree. And there's eastern hemlock trees as well. Um, Make sure you don't just say hemlock because there is a, the plant in the hemlock the family, or excuse me, in the uh, carrot slash par- parsley family that's highly poisonous, obviously. They killed Socrates with it. Um, and uh, so this, uh, along with all the members, most of the members of the pine family, um, you can just suck on for vitamin C. So if you run out of, right now, there's not a lot of people in the, natural world if they weren't shopping that would have anything with vitamin C left over unless they had it preserved and dried from the year prior. Mm. I don't chew on it because it pulls out the resins. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but mm. I'm starting out because I forgot there that I'm trying to mm. sing at the end of this broadcast uh, one of my favorite songs. And um, anyway, the bigger pine fam that have huge cones, of course, is where you get the pine nuts. Uh, but be very careful um, about pine nuts that come from China because some have caused, including with Kim, a weird thing where you lose your sense of taste. Um, For a couple some, of weeks. Some, maybe one of the different kinds of pine um, trees that grow in China. So most get uh, imported from Turkey nowadays, I think, Both. that we have China. Uh, in China. But... Yeah, anyways. Do you want to talk about Oh, what? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's go over this way to see okay. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the pinion pine and the, um, oh, my gosh, look at this beautiful salmonberry growing <laughs> all out here. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. Can't wait for that to be. It might be our first uh, berry if somebody doesn't get this right along the trail. Anyways, uh, pinion pine in uh, the Rocky Mountains is the most popular in this area. Let's look at this right here. Uh, Kim wanted to mention something about the skunk cabbage that you can see growing in here. I call it swamp lantern. And Kim, do you want to come talk about it at all? Oh, you don't? Okay. Well, it's not wild, edible, or medicinal that we know of. Uh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, there's some misinformation out there. About harvesting for food, I think. Yeah. Speak to that. No, yeah, we're just going to skip that because okay. it's definitely not food. Don't do it. No. Unless you process it correctly, and even then, who wants to harvest it? Yeah. All right. Oh, there is a invasive uh, blackberry growing right here. This is a Himalaya blackberry, uh, but of course all the blackberries are nice and edible. But they are not even flowering yet. Also, we're going to cross the bridge, and I'll probably we're going to end up here singing the song. This is our amazing salmon stream. Um, there's not much left in there. Oh, there's some ducks. There's some wild edibles. Oh, I think I scared them off. As soon as I said that, I know they're really offended. <laughs> so, sorry. Hey, things get bad. Uh, or even. Not. So, got some um, growing in these uh, big leaf maple trees in the moss are always um, licorice fern. And some people claim some um, herbal 
uses of this. You could try to uh, look up friendsofthetrees.net with Michael Polarski, also known as Skeeters, kind of the, one of the founders of permaculture in Washington State and herbal medicine. And um, he talks a lot about um, licorice fern. I don't particularly like lic licorice, so if I even like just taste it, I get a headache. Um, but do be careful about claims of antiviral properties for that. Uh, for usnea lichen, um, can actually cause some serious damage. Uh, so all these things need to be taken only under the advisement of a naturopathic physician. Um, if you're going to do some of these more intense herbal medicine. Speaking of intense herbal medicine, let's look now at one of the most acclaimed and probably most revered uh, medicinal plants in the Pacific Northwest. Perhaps the most revered is Lily. <laughs> Smells some good <laughs> stuff right there. <laughs> Be careful or above you. Don't jump up, Lily, because, oh, Lily. Anyways, is this plant right here. And as you can see, has a lot of spikes. See if I can get it to focus on there. See the spikes on there? That is uh, Devil's Club. I like to call it Medicine Club because it has shown to affect a lot of different systems in your body. Um, and I won't even go there about talking about those things. So you would really want to talk with um, Native peoples of the Pacific Northwest um, to see uh, what the traditional uses are of it, and then again, under the advisement of a naturopathic physician for, um, you know, Western sort of uses of it. I do you the flower off? Oh, is there any left? No. I mean, there's oh. leaves. People want to see the leaves. So, yeah. unfortunately, right here, there's this cool plant. Uh, let's see if I can... But it got... The flower got eaten deer. off of it. The flower so, comes up what, first. Right. That's what the flower unique, was. But a deer or looks like probably tree. popped it off right there. And here's the, the leaves. leaves are starting to come out. That's Colt's, Palmate, Palmate Colt's foot. Right next to growing in it, though, are the stinging nettles. We did that yesterday. The rest is a water leaf. Pacific and water. so you can look at our broadcast from yesterday. And then there's Pacific water leaf in here. It's hard to tell the difference right there when the flowers aren't out and... So, oh yeah, Kimber, can you show us what book you're using right here? Oh, yes. Every area has a, f okay, whatever might be the best in your area. Oh, We're it's really be lucky. backwards on the video. Yeah, that's Oh, right. no, it's Plants of the Pacific Northwest Coast, um, and you want to get the revised edition, even though you can get the super cheap ones online. If it's not revised, it's old. Yeah, and, um, and they're sometimes out of print, print so they're really expensive sometimes. They actually, the distribution center along with all the other warehouses are right up this a uh, couple of miles up from us, but um, anyway, so if you can get a copy of it for a somehow decent price, if you're in this area, obviously. There's one for the other side of the mountains, one for the Boreal Forest in the north, one for the Rocky Mountains, uh, and then the rest of the country, you're going to have to figure out your own uh, local plant. What do you have? Oh. Okay, I was just going to point out, that is Palmate Colt's yeah. right? There's the flower up there. <laughs> yeah, there's the flower up there. Right. Anyway. Well, we're not going to go on and on and on about all more, too many more plants. Um, did you want, want? Did you bring along the? Oh, we'll do it back at our house, maybe the cottonwood. Oh, and I said Maybe down you somewhere. know what? We should actually make a salve next oh, week. Okay. We'll make a salve next week yeah. on the broadcast uh, from things that you can get. Yep, but uh, I just wanted to show you next. Last thing we want to do. We won't collect water today, but I wanted to show you when you uh, if you do need to find natural spring water. You have to travel to find it, but we happen to live on uh, one of the three spots in, known in western Washington, one, two, three, four, five spots where you can kind of collect natural artesian spring water, very, you know, very well known. But now out on hikes in the, in the wilderness, you might find water just coming right out of the ground. And... Um, I'm just kind of pointing it up where oh, it is okay. here, but the uh, but you want to make sure that if it's rained recently, you know you really can't tell whether it's just really coming out of the ground or whether it's actually just runoff. But this, what we have here, is the same um, wetness all year long, including during our dry season, and um, you can see it's just running kind of right out of the ground right here. And if things did get, if we had like an earthquake or something. Uh, and the water were cut off for a while in our area. We just come up to the very highest point of wetness, which is right here. 
and uh, dig a hole and uh, let it sit for, I don't know, five minutes, clear out and collect our water there. But tomorrow there is a place where somebody has dug a um, uh, kind of a hole in this whole like square mile is, or should I say quarters, maybe a half square mile, anyways, is artesian springs coming out all over the place. But um, we're, there's one spot we'll, we'll sneak up to and start our broadcast tomorrow, which by the way is going to be collecting um, natural spring water as well as finding natural toilet paper. Very hot commodity right now. <laughs> um, and so there is one particular plant that's our number two for number two. Don't talk about it now. That we're going to show you tomorrow. Um, yes, number one for number two we can't show you because A, it's not out yet, and B, I wouldn't really want to share it with everybody or everybody would just be decimating all of those. Oh, good point. Yeah, but we can do number three for number two There's as well. There's always a flat rock. Yeah. All right, should we go down and do our song? Sure, what do you want to do? And uh, also coming up, by the way, oh, I'm going to do another Ken Longquist song. We are people of the river since we're going to be by the creek. And uh, talking about water. So coming up, I think tomorrow we're going to do collecting natural spring water. We're going to uh, do the finding natural toilet paper. Um, and also how to naturally go in the woods, maybe. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> oh, you can do ah, Comedy. Yeah, no, we're going to have to get one of our young wolf camp instructors over to demonstrate that, maybe. Um, anyway, so to sanit sanitarily uh, go number one and two in the woods, we'll talk about it, and, and I don't think we're going to demonstrate that. It's a little embarrassing. But anyway, um, and then on Saturday, we had a work, we do have a workshop scheduled. It's all outdoors. We're going to separate everybody out. Uh, social distancing, hygiene, um, keeping the numbers down below where they need to be, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there's not going to be very many people come because, of course, a lot of people canceled for fear of um, or for the, we're going to screen everybody before they come as well. But I'm going to broadcast, I think, some of it. Okay. Yeah, like the Innocent Wilderness Survival. So we'll do the orders, broadcast the order of survival and some other things. All right, so I'm going to set this up. Can you pull it out of the bag? And uh, I think I'll sit right here and sing another song, same as yesterday by, not the same song as yesterday, but same artist, Ken Longquist. And uh, again, Ken Longquist is a uh, Wisconsin folk singer. And he is... Uh, <laughs> Grab that. Thanks. He's uh, was my favorite in college. Um, and this song is called "We Are People of the River." Or something like this. Hopefully, you can hear the creek in the background. This is all natural spring water creek. This starts up about a couple hundred yards up. How's it go? Let's see how the old tuning is. Ooh, that's the problem. Any last things we should mention about wild edibles and medicinals? Advisements and things like Do that? Do your research. Um, we didn't talk about the cults that much, but that's always my example. That. Yesterday, by the way, the song got cut off because the battery died. I'm sure it's going to charge before we do this. We are people of the river. We go on and on and on. Gentle as the rolling river and just as. Children of the gathered raw waters, rushing life force of the land, blue and running like the veins within a giant's hand. We are people of the river, we go on and on and on, gentle as they Yeah. 
like a river can persuade the hardest stone. So let the mountains rise before us. Keep your spirits up, going outside, getting in the sun, that UV that kills viruses and things, and keeps the uh, lungs fresh, get a little bit of exercise. What else? That makes you happy. Oh, it makes you happy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and of course, it's not going to be this, we're getting a strange stretch of nice sunny weather, which is really helpful in here in western Washington. but. Not always going to be like that, so even if it is rainy or cold, get out there anyway, just for a little while. Uh, listen to your inspirational music that you love, and um, keep on keeping on. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>